Uh, what Andy's going to do first of all is he's going to use the Polex like a spear to make a thrust into the eyes. And as that shield blocks, then we're going to get a thrust that's going to come in either to the armpit or to the low uh, inside leg. Now from here, what Andy's going to try and do is drive up into the face. Scott swings around with a cut to the neck. Andy beats it down, comes over with a clubbing blow that's knocked aside. We've been reenacting an armoured fight between two men at arms, or perhaps two knights. To be fair, what we're doing isn't quite right because we're extending it. The fight is a bit longer than it would be in reality, uh, but the techniques we are using, the weapons and the armour that we are wearing, they are all correct and of the period. And this is your weapon of choice, the Polax, P-O-L-L, -L, Pol. So it's not a Polax, although there is a rather large pole involved. Pol, medieval word for head. So this is a head-destroying weapon. It's basically a weapon designed to take down a fully armoured knight. The hammer is used for crushing the armour, and the two spears at either end designed to find the gaps or the chinks in your opponent's armour. Whereas my opponent, he is using a sword and shield, the typical weapons of a knight, a chivalric weapon. At this point in time, uh, swords are developing a long, fine point designed for thrusting. So it's not so much used for cutting, because the armour will protect you against that. It takes a lot of skill to use it, but if you find those gaps underneath the arms, the visor, or even the throat, then your opponent's in an awful lot of trouble. So it's quite fun, also quite exhausting. <laughs> 